Well, good good afternoon, everybody. Um, my name's Adrian. Um, I work for the ECITB. Uh, I'm going to be joined this morning by my colleague, Dawn. Um, and we've got some guests who we're going to uh, introduce later on as well, um, who, who've actually undertaken the apprenticeship journey. Okay, so we work for the ECITB. Um, if we go to the next slide, please, Dawn. Okay, so the Engineering Construction Industry Training Board is the industry training board for the engineering construction industry. It means that we look after the skills, uh, the standards and the qualifications that the workers who work in the engineering construction industry need. So in short, we need to make sure that the workers have the right skills to do their jobs. It does sound simple, but engineering construction workers have very, very highly skilled jobs. They work on plants like uh, or in places such as nuclear power stations or on offshore oil rigs. So I'm sure you can understand and appreciate that it's very, very complex. OK, next slide, please. OK, so the engineering construction industry is a very, very large industry. It's also a very interesting industry. It offers a whole range of career paths. So Dawn will be talking more about the types of roles that we have within the industry and how you can access them and what those roles offer in terms of progression and challenges. Um, so in total, we make up about one fifth of the total UK economy. So it is a big deal. And it's not just in the UK, it's also globally. So rather than me talk uh, you know, in detail about the engineering construction industry, um, in a minute, we're gonna play a video but you'll see that we make up most of the UK's critical infrastructure. Without our industry, you wouldn't have food, you wouldn't have power. So there'd be no lights, there'd be no water flowing, and you'd be rather hungry. There'd be no medicine. And we contribute around 100 billion annually to the UK economy. And we employ around about 190,000 people. So Dawn, if you could just play uh, the video, that would be brilliant. Engineering construction is the industry that powers our lives. It designs, builds and looks after the energy systems that keep our lights on, the machines that keep our water clean and flowing and put food on your table. The systems that generate the fuels we use to get about and to keep us warm. Engineering construction is central to tackling climate change. Do you want to learn skills that will allow you to enjoy an exciting and rewarding career and get paid a great starting salary? The industry needs people like you to power its future. It's time to change the future. It's time to change your future. It's time for a career in engineering construction. Thank you, Dawn. If we could have the next slide, please. Okay, so you would have you would have seen that engineering construction covers lots and lots of sectors. We cover things like oil and gas. Now, oil and gas isn't just about putting fuel into cars. It's also about manufacturing materials as well, producing materials to make things like smartphones and tablets. And obviously, we provide the fuel to keep us moving and keep our houses warm. We're currently um, supporting, or the, the, the oil and gas industry is currently supporting the transition to a low carbon future. Now, Dawn will talk more about net zero in a minute. We also look after pharmaceuticals, and that speaks for itself, really. Um, renewables, um, and, and that produces energy using the Earth's natural resources like wind waves and biomass. Now, energy from renewables is clean and affordable and also reliable. We also look after the chemical sector. Now, the chemical sector is a highly diverse sector and it impacts on almost every aspect of our daily life. We also look after the food and drink industry or sector, should I say, um, and this is the biggest manufacturing sector in, in, in the UK, larger than automotive and aerospace combined. So they produce things ranging from biscuits to beers. Power, um, now we're talking about a wide range of power, power mix here. We're talking about power stations and turbines that can generate electricity. 
And then we've also got nuclear. Now, nuclear, the nuclear sector makes up more than 20% of the country's electricity. And it is a reliable and low carbon energy source. And then last but not least, we've got water. Now, obviously, without water, we wouldn't be able to thrive, let alone survive. So as you can see, it's a very, very, very diverse industry. So if we go to the next slide. OK, so I mentioned that uh, the, the engineering construction industry isn't just a UK thing. It's a global thing. So globally, engineering construction is booming. We're expecting the, uh, the, the, the employment in, in, in our industry. Um, it's forecasted to expand by around about 17, nearly 18%. And that equates to nearly, nearly 33,500 jobs by 2026. So this workforce is wide and it's diverse and it needs continual professional development to be able to meet the change in technological needs moving forward. So over the next 10 years, it's anticipated that the UK will deliver 700 infrastructure projects worth 50 billion. And a lot of that is, is, is energy projects. So if you consider all of those energy projects, all, all those infrastructure projects, they're going to need people to be able to do things like um, design, install, operate, maintain, and decommission those plants. So as you can see, there's a lot of requirements. So moving on to the careers i'm now going to hand over to my colleague dawn thompson and dawn's going to talk a little bit more in detail about the careers that you can that you can find in engineering construction thank you adrian so um yes as you can see and as adrian has spoken about the engineering construction industry is a wide and varied industry and there are roles available um starting roles available at all levels level two level three level four degree level apprenticeships um all the way through a huge range of disciplines covering project management, welding, pipe fitting, design and drafting, mechanical installation, project control, steer direction. Some of those now looking at the new skills that are required, so wind turbines, industrial drones. Um, and within that, therefore, there is a huge variety of job opportunities, uh, starting from you know, steer directors, riggers, um, you know, all the way through and encompassing man, um, MBAs, project directors, project managers, um, subsea engineers, process engineers, chemical engineers, laboratory technicians. So a huge opportunity and a huge wide range of um, places for you to start, irrespective of where you live within the country. Um, and as we have both said, um, you know, these are, are opening up new ideas, new um, new industries, new sectors to uh, look at careers. And if I move on to the next slide, um, net zero. Um, the opportunities um, now for uh, careers in net zero, um, which is everything ranging from wind turbines to nuclear power stations um, are um, getting more varied more uh, and more increasing in opportunities because you will be at the heart of designing and installing these energy solutions. Um, the transition is real. Um, you know, many of you will see that already. Many of you may well have electric cars. Um, and you know, our remit is to make sure that we've got the right skills for that, uh, for those uh, opportunities. So we're working very hard with government training providers, employers to make sure that you've got the skills for uh, today and the future. If I um, so if we move on to the next slide. OK, thank you, Dawn. So what we're looking at here, this kind of follows on from what Dawn was talking about um, with with net zero. So in our industry in the UK, we have what we refer to as industrial hotspots or clusters. So if you look at the map there, you can see that that starting off at the top in Scotland and Peterhead and then moving all the way down the east coast, round the bottom and then back up the west coast, we've got um, various clusters. Now, if you look at the key, you'll see that that that, that the clusters comprise of either carbon capture, upstream oil and gas, down, downstream oil and gas power, hydrogen, renewables, chemicals or nuclear. Now, those clusters tend to be activity hotspots for our companies. And that 
that means that if you enter our industry and you're based in the UK, you could find yourself working in, in any one of those locations. So just to put that into, into context, if you're working for a, a business and, and your business had it, has its head office in London, it may be that you actually, depending on your role, work in the head office, or it may be if you're a site-based based person, you could be deployed all over the UK, depending on where your, your business has its contracts. So I think this kind of just highlights that it is, um, if you like travel, then, then you know, potentially this could be the industry for you. Okay, now that's not to say that it's just UK, as we alluded to earlier, we've also got a global footprint. So if you're, you know, if you're, if, if you're up for a sort of experience in your new cultures and having a bit of, a, you know, exciting travel, then again, this is the industry for you. So just to summarize, in a nutshell, engineering construction is a wide, diverse industry. It offers exciting job roles, exciting challenges, um, potential for growth and progression, and also uh, the chance to see the world. Now, if we go to the next slide, please, Dawn. Rather than Dawn and myself talking about this, we're very lucky today insofar as we're being joined by three young gentlemen who have actually made this journey. They've, they've done their apprenticeship or in the, they're in the process of, of um, doing their apprenticeships. And uh, they're, they're, they're just going to um, recant some of their experiences, really, um, which I'm sure you'll find very, very beneficial. So what I'm going to do now is, is I'm going to hand over to, to our, our three um, guests, and that's Dan, Kyle and George. So, Dan, over to you. Yeah, hi everyone. Um, I my name's Dan Sanders, and I'm currently on a four-year design and drafting apprenticeship with WSP in the UK. Uh, I'm in my third year, and my main responsibilities involve providing mechanical and process design, working with a variety of different clients, mainly in the pharmaceutical and food and beverage sector. Uh, hi everyone. Uh, my name's Kyle. Um, I do just want to say, actually, if you do you have any kind of questions while we're talking to you, just put them in the chat box and we'll be happy to stop and just um, answer, them, answer them. So my name is Kyle, I'm 24. And I'm, we've got just over seven years um, in the industry working for an engineering company called Wally. If you don't know who they are, I suggest you give them a quick Google and you'll have, you'll have your answers there. So I started when I was 16, I did the four year apprenticeship course. And then I went on to do the four year part-time sponsored degree um, which I completed last year. So I've had the full apprenticeship experience, really. Um, George, I don't know if you want to go next. Hello, um, I'm George Rowe. I work for the same company as Kyle, and we did the same four-year apprenticeship course and then went on to university. I'm on my eighth year now, and as Dawn mentioned, all the different industries in the construction and engineering sectors, uh, our company basically works in every single one of them nearly and in nearly every single country in the world so it's definitely vast opportunities in these companies so do you want to go back to the first question dan yeah so the first question we're going to address is, is why why did i choose an apprenticeship route so i for me i chose an apprenticeship route because I, I'm, I'm an active learner so i, I learn better by by doing things and, and this route really enabled me to to sort of learn on the job while learning the theory behind what i'm doing so an apprenticeship was was a pretty perfect fit in terms of applying my studies to, to real life projects uh engineering is a sector that, that's always progressing and changing so you can never know enough so for me the sooner i could get stuck in and, and learning uh, the better for me kyle yeah i was, I was very similar for me when I was 16, I wanted to kind of get into a company or an organization where I could start working my way up because um, back then, and I still am a big advocate for kind of working hard to, where you, you know, to get where you want to be. Um, so doing an apprenticeship kind of gave me the best opportunity to do that. And also you're earning money from the very beginning, you know, with the apprenticeship, I was earning a wage from the very start. I was getting paid to study whilst also working on projects and gaining experience. It was a huge win-win. And um, George? Uh, so probably all our reasons are pretty similar, earning while you're learning. Uh, so I didn't really do well much with classroom education, so I thought I'd learn on the job. Uh, but the thing about apprenticeships, they're very flexible. I was always able to go back to university uh, in the future if I wanted. And then me and Carl ended up going that route as well. Uh, additionally, you get a chance to 
meet early and work with experienced engineers and SMEs in the role from day one, um, learning learning with some of the best engineers in the world right now and uh, yeah, learning every day. Okay, so question two. So that's what what's our, our favorite part of, of doing an apprenticeship. Um, for me, that, that would definitely be the, the variety of the work. So, so one of the main things you can expect as an apprentice, especially in, in an engineering environment, is that, is that every day can be a new challenge. So experience and training in different departments of, of the company was, was, is very common in apprenticeships, I think, which is great because it gives, it gives you a broad perspective of, of how you want your career to progress and, and where you want to go. Uh, just to give you an example, in my two and, a half, two and a half year career so far, I've visited sites all over the UK. Uh, experienced everything from sort of the finances and the management of a project to working with with like like George said working with top engineers to produce some designs that I'm, I am really quite proud of um, on some some high profile projects so that there's just so many opportunities to develop and progress and, and I find that really exciting yeah I'm, I mean I'm pretty much the same um, being able to kind of gain site experience, experience and, and different, different project experience at such a young age um, is invaluable you know i worked in ireland for a year when i was 19 on a pharmaceutical project and i also worked on an oil refinery down in southampton for three years and that was all before the age of 24. so it's, it's so valuable to be able to do that and also i think being able to kind of manufacture professional links with colleagues and clients which will benefit me in years to come is a really really you know a really important thing that i enjoyed about the experience so far uh i think the travel thing uh there's definitely a bit of a uh, similarity between all of us. Uh, so I work on about five, six projects at the moment, and each one is in a different country in a different place. And they're all so big and vast. And there's some of them are saving the world. Some of them are really, really big oil and gas um, projects as well. Um, but they're making a big impact in the world. And that that means a lot for someone learning on the job. Um, every day is different, even eight years in, uh, still learning every single day. And then obviously meeting others in the same boat, the apprenticeship day one, you're going to meet loads of people at college or um, in the office and you'll sort of work through, work through the course and the experience together. Right. Okay. So why is the industry important? Um, from my perspective, uh, the engineering industry represents the opportunity for for me and, and other people like me to have a say in things like like future infrastructure, technology, e even climate climate change. You, you get a say in, in, in everything. So because in a lot of ways, the engineering of the future affects how we live our lives. And, and to be part of that is, is, is really important, I think. That's a good answer. Um, I think it's important because engineering as a whole is so vast. It's actually crazy and it covers so many kind of important areas and sectors which were in the presentation just before we started speaking you know things such as safe transport pharmaceuticals which i mentioned before um factories that manufacture medicines um and just building a healthier healthier environment working in like renewable energy projects um you may have heard or you definitely will hear a lot about that kind of energy transition in the future so because engineering is so vast there's so many different opportunities that's what makes it so important especially for you young people and yeah, the energy transition is really important and it's what got got me a lot more um, interested in my role at the moment. Uh, I think Dawn showed the picture of the UK with all the different clusters um, of mainly carbon emitting uh, power plants, etc., or even nuclear power stations as well. And all of them now need decarbonisation and a lot of that work is coming towards our project. Uh, our companies and our apprentices and our new engineers and if you want to be a part of that definitely the kind of way you can do that right and, and and a big one what 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 do we wish we knew at the start of our journey um for me that the, the main thing would be that you, you shouldn't be afraid to take opportunities and, and ask questions uh, this is something that took a while to sort of hit home for me and it, it's no one's expecting you to be an expert and it, and it really does pay off if, if you show a great positive attitude and a willingness to learn uh, if you take opportunities and ask questions 
uh, you, you you will be in a great position at the come the end of your apprenticeship. I mean, there's there's so much you can learn, and and but by asking those extra couple of questions, you can really really take take your sort of career to the next level. That's good, and mine kind of ties into that because mine was quite a cliche and cheesy one as well. That is, don't be afraid to make mistakes. When you start your career and you're young, doesn't matter who you are, you always worry that you're going to make mistakes. Um, you know, you think your colleagues are going to judge you for making mistakes or your boss isn't going to give you work, but that's, that's all false. You know, the only way you're going to really progress in your profession, whether it's, that's in engineering or not, is by making the mistakes and learning from them. Because the more you make at the beginning of the career um, means the less you're going to make further down the line when it's a bit more important not to make mistakes. Um, and the other thing I probably would say is do your own research because it's quite easy for us to kind of sit here and talk at you guys. But you need to be able to go away and do your own research to work out if this is actually a route you want to go down. So that's probably the most important thing, to be honest. And I'm not sure, following on from that, I'm not sure if all the face-to-face -face careers events are still happening, but I think definitely come to as many of these and as, as many careers events that you can possibly do because at one point you're going to meet our manager or even us face-to-face -face and you're going to be able to get a, a bigger insight of what we do and how we do it. Mm -hmm. uh, so I've got, actually wrote this one down. No need to stress. You're learning even if you don't know you are. And um, I definitely needed to hear that eight years ago. But we're, we're all still learning every day. And yeah, no one knows everything. Exactly. Right. I, I can't see any questions for us in the chat. No. I don't know. There was, I so, think there was one earlier for, I think that's more towards Dawn and Adrian, that somebody yeah. asked if there was a list of companies around London who take apprentices. Okay. Um, right. So is um, are we? Uh, is that where we are with um, with regards to questions at the moment? So if I just move on to the, the last um, slide, just so that you can see QR codes and our uh, uh, social media links. Um, thank you, Kyle, Dan and George. Your insights have been absolutely brilliant today um, and some really good positive comments, I think, to help everybody. Um, find out more about the industry. Um, I think you've all given um, some really good advice as well. Uh, and so I think, so the question was, sorry, what op what companies are based in the sort of London area? Yeah, who take on apprentices. Okay, I will answer that from a, um, a generic perspective, really. Um, there are links um, that will come out of um, this, um, this webinar and our website, and in particular the apprenticeship um, website with um, iFate, which will have links to organisations that are recruiting. There are a lot of companies recruiting. Um, I, you know, I can name some, but equally, um, do go and do your research and put in the location that you are um, close to, and that will give you links. But rather than give um, specific companies out at this moment in time. But there are, I, I know of at least 20 or 30 engineering companies that are looking for apprentices at all levels and all disciplines um, across the country um, as we speak with start times now and September, April, March. So a lot of opportunities out there for you. So Dawn, Matt, Matt's just put yeah. in a few links in the chat. So okay. that's fine. There, there's a few more questions coming now. Yeah, Do you want to read them just... out? Just before we move on 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 onto that, Georgia, that there is also a, an iFate um, website, which is a government website. Hopefully, Matt will be able to find the link, and that website allows you to look at all of the apprenticeship standards in England. Mm -hmm. And not only that, it will give you a, a role profile, so it will tell you what the job entails, and it will also tell you what kind of sector um, you can expect to work in. So that that's a really good, a really 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 good referral site. So apologies. Um, we were going to go back to the questions, weren't there? Weren't we? Yes. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I think we've got th there's three here. So how can we find apprenticeship opportunities in this sector? I think Matt, Matt put a few links in the chat there, which uh, kind of answers that one. Uh, what are the entry requirements for these type of, of, of apprenticeships? That's a good so question. Okay. Yeah. On, yes. on, so, so that kind that kind that kind of varies. Um, and I think the best thing to do is 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 to have a look at the, the IFAT website. Now um, you need to go into that and look at the apprentice standards. And each apprentice standard will list the entry requirements. So typically they're kind of set by the employers that develop the apprenticeships. Um, 
traditionally they've been sort of A to C grade in 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 maths English and potentially a science based subject. But I think they are quite flexible depending on the apprent the type of apprenticeship. So my advice is if you're interested in an apprenticeship, then um, you you know have a look have a look see what if it does mention any specific entry requirement. Uh, uh, alternatively, you know contact a training provider, a local training provider and um, ask a question. There is also a, a search facility on the on the IFATE website when you look at the standard, the individual standard that you're interested in. So for instance, if you're interested in being a pipe fitter, look at the pipe fitter standard and on the right hand side, it says find a training provider. And if you click that link, it will give you um, the, the uh, contact details for training providers that, that deliver the training for the standard so you could contact them and you could ask them and you know get some information that way okay um we've i think right how early on would you start looking for an apprenticeship well i think the guys were pretty much unanimous in in what they said the earlier the better really um i i yeah, would i think we all started at 16 is that correct or? I, I didn't i started a bit later on Okay, but um, I, I've known people start as late as 24, and yes. I don't yes. know what the limit is nowadays. But I don't think earlier the better. But it, it, any any age, it doesn't matter. Just if yeah. you want one, go for it. Yeah, that, that kind of links into the the I've started university but didn't enjoy it. How can I look at apprenticeships? Point. It, it like like George just said, it's never too late or or too early to start looking. I think it, it, if you've started university and and you do want to pursue an apprenticeship, do, don't let that stop you. It doesn't matter what position you are in to go out and get some work experience and learn on, on the job is, is always going to be a good thing. Yeah, I agree. Use them links. There's loads of links in there. Copy and paste them, save them and use them. That's what I'd say. Yeah, I think the other thing to, to, to note is is apprenticeships aren't just um, entry programs now. They're not traditionally they were for 16 to 19 year olds. And that's not the case now. You can do an apprenticeship at any age. But but seriously, start planning. The earlier, the better. And, and and I think there's no there's no such thing as a silly question, so don't be afraid to ask questions because you don't know what you don't know. Yep, spot on. Yeah. I can't see any more questions other than that. Yeah. Right on time as well. I'm just about to say that's perfect timing. Yeah, I just think the last thing to say is, you know, the apprenticeships come at various different levels. Um, so um, the, the, the person that um, posted the question about I've started university but didn't enjoy it, it's worth noting that you can actually do degree level apprenticeships as well. So it's, it's not just your traditional level three, level two, level three. They go all the way up to master's level so um just do your research have a look on that i fate website and identify the apprentice standards that that relate to the roles that you're interested in mm -hmm. i can see there it says get in touch with us on the presentation slides so you know i mean if you if you've got any questions you think of in the coming days or weeks that you just come off the top of your head just get in touch you've got you've got all the um contacts there so ask the questions through them contacts yes they will come through and then um somebody within the easy itb will get back to you mm -hmm. okay i think we've just about covered all the questions and i think i'd just like to conclude by thanking um mm -hmm. dan george and kyle for for giving us some time and you know, there's nothing, nothing more powerful than getting it straight from the mouths of those that have undertaken the journey. No problem. Yeah, thanks for listening. Mm. Thank you.